Bible talk about it? Who knew there's a possibility? Not a likely one, but dude, I mean, destruction. What'd you make about Anthony Joshua on uh, Friday night? He took care of business, man. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what he did. He came out there and took care of business. He knew. He, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Joshua felt like this guy is, doesn't have anything for him. It's probably his mentality going in there. And uh, I put it like this. I think initially in the first round, he was kind of like, okay, let's see what this guy's got to do. And then like he got and landed like a, push, a few good shots in there. He's like, yeah, fuck this. <laughs> We're getting this guy out of here. And he probably saw openings. He probably saw certain things, I'm sure. Stuff that we, as the average boxing fan, we like don't don't see. Yeah. And uh, he got him out of there, man. Dropped him. I mean, he was, when he dropped, I was like, fuck, man. But got up every single time. Gave him credit for that. Tough as hell, man. I mean, look, Francis made a fuck ton of money, man. Life-changing money. Life-changing money. Brought across both his boxing matches. Um, I, I, I got to give some credit to the boxing community. They gave a lot, you know, even though he lost the boxing community, or at least the boxers gave some credit to to, Fran, to, to Francis. They were like, uh, you know, good for him. You know, he came out here, competed, and on top of that, he's made a lot of money. As well as uh, what Joshua said afterwards, he's, he told him not to leave boxing, which I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. He's like, don't leave boxing. I was like, damn, that, that touched my soul, man. <laughs> it really did. I, I was yeah. like, it was kind of like, fuck, dude. Yeah, like, I mean, it was a sweet moment, bro. It was a sweet moment. I couldn't I mean, believe he said that to him after just viciously knocking him out. <laughs> <laughs> and Connie was looking like, who the fuck is this guy talking to? <laughs> Dude, we're, about, we're about to fight, bro. He's like, he's like, why is some British dude talking to me right now? We haven't touched gloves yet. Why are you saying this? Like, I'm still in France, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> jokes aside, uh, brutal. And I went ahead and rewatched the fight yesterday. You know, as I try to I try to watch, try to you know take a look at stuff, see if stuff I missed on fight night. And uh, I knew that Ngannou went southpaw, and that was mainly his downfall. But I don't think go back and rewatch Joshua and Ngannou in case you haven't. It was almost. Even as an Ngannou fan, it was almost hilarious. I mean, I, I will say this. So in the last, he, in the last minute of the round, he changes. He changes. He switches. He's, he had some success with or Orthodox. He's landing the left hook like Alan Connolly did against like Fury, right? But when Joshua would kind of dive in for the jab, get him with the, he'd hit him with the left hook. Joshua was getting kind of lazy. Ngannou switches southpaw. He got dropped nine seconds later after not landing a single punch. He switches southpaw. Joshua just looks at him. He's this motherfucker has spent 24 rounds with Alexander Usyk. And two fight camps recently, he's preparing for southpaws and drops him instantly. Nine seconds in. Ghana comes out the next round, have more success. He's doing okay. He's still bugs, but he's still there. But just southpaw again, he gets annihilated twice. I mean, I look, I, I, I love Dewey Cooper. I love Eric Nixick. I love all the people involved with in Ghana who train him for this boxing journey. Shout out Iron Mike, you know? The, the audacity to try and go southpaw against a boxer whenever you're not a boxer. And, and sure, it worked against Tyson Fury. It's, it's hard to be a southpaw in general. It's hard, it's hard to be a southpaw in general. And, but, and, and be able to switch between both stances and be good yeah, yeah. and find success. I mean, it's completely different. Especially as a guy in your second boxing match. And like, I get the, the mindset against Fury. The mindset against Fury, if you're going southpaw, which he did, he didn't do it a whole lot. He did do it though, because like, you, he's, this guy's never really, he's never fought you before. He's never seen you in action. He doesn't know what to expect. He's only seen footage of MMA. And, Gone of a boxer versus an MMA fighter, very different. So we caught off guard Fury. Dude, Anthony Joshua had 10 rounds of film to go off with, so he, knew, he knows what you look like southpaw, and he's faced a way better southpaw than you're ever going to be, Francis. I love you, man. But, like, the rewatch of the fight, it just kind of made me mad. I'm like, man, like, big Fran, what are you doing, man? Like, I mean, who knows, right? Maybe yeah. he stays orthodox and it, it's different, or maybe it's not. But no, I mean, he still probably loses because he's orthodox, but like, he still he wasn't getting off first and all that. But like, I mean, really, it really whatever, did. It whatever, no, man. Whatever, no. We gotta be, yeah, yeah, it accelerated. I will say that. It really accelerated what was going to happen. Um, yeah, but still, though, props to Nganu. And I liked, uh, like you said, a lot of boxers were giving him props because how can you not? I know that there, were, there were a lot of fans who were like, I mean, because none of them could do the inverse. No. None of them would be willing to do the inverse. Correct. And if they did, it would go much worse. I, I mean, mean, did you hear Did you hear what, uh, what uh, Francis said to Tyson? What did he say? I can't remember what was the circumstance or where it came up, but he was like, if we were in a street, if we were in a street fight, if we were out, if we were out in the streets and it, and it was just you and me and no one was around, you would have, you would beg for your life because what I could do to you would be fun and something along the lines of that. Like he would just, you know, Francis is like, I would destroy you. Well, I believe that Tyson Fury is crazy enough to fight uh, in Ghana MMA because he's an actual crazy person. Yeah, that's not smart. Yeah. Um, it's not smart for any boxer to come over and say MMA. But apparently what happened is, is during fight week, apparently they were all at Turkey Al Jeet's, you know, fucking mansion. Um, and nice. I guess they're having like a, they're all talking about like what was going to happen moving forward. I guess it was like Fury, Joshua, and Ngannou. 
um, and I guess like Fury went up and, and started arguing with Ngannou and, and Ngannou like he, he he talked about an interview later he's like you know I kind of let him go it wasn't the time or place but if he would have talked to me like that at some other time it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have gone well for him you know I'm like and I'm, guessing, I'm guessing this is the same thing with Ngannou yes it is and then uh, well he and at the press conference too they were going back and forth and Ngannou Ganu, man, I've and never he, seen Big Fran mad, but I apparently mean, Fury got he, under the skin. Yeah. He was not wrong, dude. By the way, you could tell Fury they panned at him after he, he could definitely be like a little embarrassed, dude. I mean, well, he felt the type yeah. of way. There was some sort of. Well, and here's the thing too: is people are like, he, oh, needed, he needed Francis yeah. to do good so he wouldn't look bad, or do at least some yeah. or be competitive. Do okay, yeah, yeah. Because like, I mean, because because now, and I feel bad for Fran too in a way because now everybody's like, well, clearly Tyson Fury didn't prepare. <laughs> I mean, sure, he said that he prepared, and all of his training partners stayed in Joseph Parker and his tr- and his head coach and his dad, and everybody said that he prepared for it. And he came in at 270, which isn't even heavy as he's ever been. But, bro, didn't you know that Ty Spear didn't even train for that fight, bro? I mean, come on. He was two, he was only two months away from fighting for the undisputed title. He must have been in terrible fucking shape. I mean, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know why people still can't give him God for credit, but I knew that was going to happen if he, if and when he lost, you know? I knew yeah. that people were going to be like, oh, Fury, see, Fury, just take it serious. He just didn't care. I mean, it, it, we're in a weird spot now, though, because we really don't know what's next for Big Fran. Um, PFL, I think if I'm if I'm laying out Franz and Ghana, we're going to four. I'm fighting Henan Ferreira and blasting that fucker out of there, getting my vengeance, right? 100%. And, and to be clear here, Henan Ferreira is a very dangerous man. I don't think he's on the same caliber as Francis Ngannou because we should get him out of there, but weird things have happened. Like Francis coming off his first knockout loss ever. Yeah, there's a lot of questions. So I'm not going to just... Run. Everybody's like, oh man, you know, Francis just go knock out these cans in the PFL. I'm like, man, are you guys ever going to fucking learn? Like, like, yeah. <laughs> like, we just saw Michael Page fight. But uh, Have you guys not seen this fight game ever? This <laughs> guy, yeah, this guy's 6'9", 267 or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? Like, he's, he's an insane human being. He's massive. So, yeah. now granted, Ngannou's a physical freak too, but you get my point. If I'm, now too. Yeah, if, if, if I'm in Ghana, though, I'm fighting Henry Ferreira. I maybe fight one more guy in MMA, you know, getting getting some easy money. <laughs> more easy money. Um, and then I'm fighting Deontay Wilder. I mean, I.